Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm gonna do a quick video on how you can make your own pepper infused oil. Something I've been meaning to do for a while and I get questions about it periodically. And a lot of people want to know amounts and what type of pepper to use and so on and so forth. Well, I'm not good at amounts, I'm good at eyeballing things. And so I'm gonna show you how I do it. But first let's talk about the re the ways I use my pepper oil. Now if you choose, you can use this to cook with. That is not why I make the pepper oil though. Now here's my last batch of pepper oil. I'm down to just a half pint right now, so it would be a good idea to go ahead and make some more. It does take me a while to work through this one. This one was made uh, December 31st of 2017, so it's it lasts me quite a while. And I think I only made a whole point, a pint of it at the time. But the things I use my pepper oil in are my the my special hair oil blend and I have a video on this I don't actually use this frequently anymore I did every day for a while or at least every time I wash my hair um, I'm gonna start doing it again for a little while because it's that time of the year that my hair has been you know your hair does that it goes through these phases and I'm into that time of the year where I got a lot more hair falling out and I'm not actually worried about it but just in case I'm going to go ahead and use some start using this more regularly again because it has really helped me but anyway I'll go ahead and link to that video also down in the description box as well as up here so that you can find that if you're interested in what I use in this because it's a blend of my pepper oil and some essential oils as well oh and uh, I don't remember if that one I used I actually added the castor oil to it but I've also been adding castor oil to that because that castor oil is also very good for hair growth and then the other thing is and I also have a video on this which I'll link to up here and down below is my homemade muscle and joint rub this has been a real lifesaver for us and I was going through a lot of it back when I was still teaching dance and martial arts and was still on the thyroid medication because I was having a lot of knee pain a lot of joint pain in my knees and I was having to use this frequently and it was to the point where I couldn't even do what we call a grand plie in ballet which basically it's a deep knee bend it just looks different than the kind you would see in like a standard workout because it's it's ballet it's different but you do have to go all the way down to where you're practically sitting on your feet and coming back up well, I couldn't do that anymore because it was hurting both my knees too much and then I, you know, I started using this and I went off my thyroid medication, which is one of those things that causes joint pain. Thyroid medication uh, will, uh, I'm not, I don't know about the natural kind, but uh, the synthetic kind does cause joint problems. And when I went off that thyroid medication, they stopped. I stopped having problems with my knees. And all of a sudden one day I'm in ballet class and I'm doing a grand plie. And my students all looked at me. I'm like, I can't believe I just did that. I wasn't even thinking. And it didn't hurt. And it was really exciting. So I know that's kind of a side issue, but if you're having joint pain and you're on thyroid medication, that's probably why. And the other thing was too, was Patrick had a lot of, was having a lot of joint pain in his shoulder and we couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And I would rub a lot of this into his shoulder and into his lower back because he, you know, he's always had lower back problems. One day it just dawned on him when I told him, I said, boy, my knees haven't been hurting, you know, and we'd both been off the thyroid medication. And he goes, oh yeah, my shoulder hasn't hurt in a long time it just just dawned on him and uh and it had been bothering him for years so going off that thyroid medication was what cured that but anyway the the muscle and joint rub was very very helpful this is really good for sprains or, or muscle strains or you know just sore muscles from working hard uh so this has really been a, a good one for us and so the base to this is my pepper infused oil so let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how I make this. So I only need a pint. So uh, because it, like I said, it takes me a while to go through this. So if you want to make a double batch of this, like I'll do a whole quart at a time, just take what I'm doing and double it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pepper in there first, the amount that I like to use, and then I'm gonna pour it back out and measure it so we can see how much is actually in here. So I prefer to use pepper flakes and because I just think it makes a cleaner, uh, a prettier color too of infused oil and it's so much easier to strain out. So I like to pour well, quite a bit in there. So about that much is, is how much I'm gonna use. I've got a measuring cup right here. So let's just go ahead and pour this in here and measure how much it is. 
So that is about one third of a cup. So now you'll know how much you can put in there. You can put in a little less, you can put in a little bit more. It just depends on how strong you want to make it. Okay, and then I'm gonna add my avocado oil, which is always my preferred oil for infusing, but you can go ahead and use like a grapeseed oil. Make sure whatever oil you use, um, I don't always recommend olive oil, but if you're going to use an olive oil for infusing, I I recommend you go with a, a, a non-virgin olive oil because it's going to have a better shelf life. Your more virgin oils, the more virgin they are, the more likely they are to go rancid. And if you're going to be keeping this in a warm spot so it can really infuse well, then I, that's where I recommend going with a, a less virgin and also a, a, an oil that can handle a high heat. Avocado is always my go-to for that and it's easy for me to come by because I can get this at Costco for a good price You can find it on Amazon and I'll go ahead and link to it below But if you have a Costco or you can go Costco online You'll get a much better price on this there than you will at Amazon All right, I had to go get another bottle and what I like to do with the one that I'm using up When I got a little bit left is I lay it on its side and let it and then eventually I'll start tilting it up too and that will help get the rest of the oil out of there um, you can also invert it over another jar just set it in the jar like this and let it fully drain out that way now I like to uh, pry this little spout out because uh, it just slows it down and the way I use this I'm always pouring it into something because it's it's the one I use most for making infused oils I might cook more with coconut oil I cook with this sometimes too but the uh, avocado oil is mostly used for making infused oils and so i you know and i'm just used to it being off so if i do use it for cooking i know that <laughs> and so i just pour a little bit at a time okay so then what you want to do is you want to put your lid on there and then shake it really well okay so now you can see what that looks like so i got a lot of pepper in there that should make a pretty strong blend i don't think on my last one i actually put a third cup i think it was closer to a quarter cup of the red pepper flakes and then i want to show you how you can if you've got if you're reusing a lid like i'm doing here that didn't all the permanent ink didn't get washed off i just spray a little bit of a rubbing alcohol in there that i always keep in a spray bottle like this and then let it you can rub it around a little bit and let it sit for a few seconds and then uh just wipe it off with a dry cloth and i'll go ahead and do that with this since i got a little extra on there because i don't really need to that that was just the lid i used so i would know when i started the infusion so i'd know when it was ready then make sure that your lid is fully dry before you start writing on it thankfully alcohol dries quickly and then just put your date today's actually the end of october the 29th so by the time you're seeing this is going to be closer to the end of november but anyway or over halfway through at least so that way i'll know i better write what it is pepper oil that way I'll know how long it's been sitting. Now I'm gonna let this sit and infuse for two months. And by the end of that two months, the color should look very much like this. Now I wanna talk a little bit about using cayenne pepper. You can use cayenne pepper. However, it's much harder to uh, filter it out if it matters to you. So as you can see, I don't know if this is gonna show up, but right here, you see this dark, this dark spot here that is my cayenne pepper from when the way I was making my muscle rub before I was using the cayenne pepper and I would just put it right in the blend and then just add my my uh, essential oils and stuff in there but the problem with it is it can I I can't get this off the bottom no matter how much I shake this up and so I just keep adding to it eventually maybe I'll get in there and clean it out but it, it can be very hard to clean it out so if you're going to use cayenne pepper i recommend you do it in a jar that you can easily get in there and clean and shake it on a regular basis you should actually be shaking this every day anyway if you can remember i usually don't remember to shake it every day because i set this in the living room behind our tv and uh 
that's kind of close to the wood stove but up and out of the way and so because I don't see it all the time I don't always think to shake my infused oils but I do you know at least a couple times a week remember to do that and so anyway it's a good idea to, to always to keep them sh shaken up during the time that they're infusing and then when your your infused oil is done when it's all infused and you're ready to uh, strain it out simply use a strainer like this I've got this nice I, I have a set of these that I got from Amazon. I'll go ahead and put my affiliate link to that down below. And they're stainless steel. I looked specifically for that because they make some of them out of, uh, I don't know, some kind of cheap metal that tends to corrode and get rusty and I, I hate that stuff. And besides, when you're using this for things like filtering out maybe water kefir grains or milk kefir grains, because it's a stainless steel, you don't have to worry about it being reactive. So, always look for that but I anyway it's a set of three so depending on what you're filtering out just simply put it over I would say at least a, if you're making a pint put it over a two cup measuring cup just because this is easiest because then you can turn around and pour it right into whatever back into the jar or whatever um, if you're making a whole quart then make sure you get a four cup measuring cup and then just pour it through your strainer oh and in the four cup you can go the next size up on the strainer anyway and then uh and there you go and then you just store it in your jar like i've got here i actually just downsized to this jar i did have it in a pint size jar and then you're ready to go and ready to use it and whatever it is whether it be you want to use it in cooking i think it'd be really good to cook with actually but i usually am just adding peppers of some sort into a lot of the things i make anyway but again in those two recipes i was telling you about those are what i use it in most all right, so there you go. That's how I make my pepper infused oil. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Oh, and if you make your own pepper infused oil, what kind of pepper do you use and how do you use your oil so that we can learn a little bit from you too. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.